Now, you have to admit, this episode of Mashal popped the hell off. Seriously. This episode went hard, especially when it came to Doc kind of redeeming himself after getting that L in the previous fight. Not to say he didn't hold out, I mean, Buddy literally took some nasty punches. But the fact that you have someone, it's kind of like this amazing combination. So not only every time he sees Lemon does he get the bloody nose as hell, he sees Lemon as a wooden doll and still is like, yeah, I tapped that. The fact that you take away his waifu, and then you not only do that, but you throw a pretty boy in front of him. Throwing a pretty boy who's insulting his intelligence, his looks, and stole his waifu, I mean, that's just the triple whammy of pissing him off, and that's why the three amigos just stay behind, because they're like, yep, we know what's about to happen. And the idea of letting him get that W, it's kind of like a mixture of a W slash stalemate, because even though he does stop the guy, you have to admit, anyone who gets exploded in the way that he just did and kind of casually comes out and poses, you have to admit, it's kind of badass. But I love the fact that you're building up into this moment of him basically saying, don't count me out just yet, and honestly, his plan was pretty great. I didn't see it coming. I wasn't sure exactly what he was trying to do, but the whole idea of a time bomb and the fact that he's like, well, I'm not going to walk out and explode myself only to have it rupture around him was pretty fantastic. Now, full live reaction to episode 8 is available on my Patreon. If you do want to see my full uncut thoughts, you can head on over there and consider supporting. This was a fantastic episode, a lot different in flavor and tone, but overall, Still had a couple of very funny zingers, but really sets a stage of the final stretch of this season of Mashal going out on some bangs. We have three fights that are going to be very, very fun to follow. And honestly, when you have these four as being a, who is the squad trying to solve the mystery as headmasters out learning that apparently some serial killers are on the loose, you have to admit it's a pretty great combo of people. You have Lance, who even though wasn't acting like an overly obsessed Siscon this episode, that is his core character. So you have the kind of stern leader who's just trying to get the job done, Mash who has no interest in anything other than cream puffs, your roommate who's basically the biggest scaredy cat right now clinging to anyone's leg that he can get a hold of, as then you have someone who is just so pissed off at anyone who he thinks is more attractive than him or could steal the wonders of women away from him but also is just kind of like that hot-headed kind of like badass slash goofball. And honestly, the fact that these four are the ones who are tasked at saving the school right now, I wouldn't have it any other way personally. But Dot really did come in clutch, man. I'm glad to see it because the boy has some cool magic. Every time his VA starts just spouting off the spell names, the just the way the vocal range will go so hard as if it's not only just like a machine gun of explosions coming from his wand the way his va will just almost feel like a machine gun rapid firing the spell names it just honestly is awesome and to see the idea of this man who basically has like these thorns he uses like this rose magic that basically is like almost tentacles but thorny roses and honestly he was getting skewered he was getting tossed around but when you have that circle of timers going off i mean it's hard not to feel proud because they didn't waste any time giving him something that felt like a redemption from his point of view i think he held out and was a badass when he was getting impaled by basically diamond punches of death but you have to admit that's probably going to eat away at you when literally you're dealing with a whole army of these types of goons who are putting down either your physical looks your mental capacities or the fact that they just think you're weak as hell and the fact that he does such cool things while holding out once again showing the durability of this man's spirit but most importantly that he does have some pretty creative spells up his sleeves it's pretty great even if they immediately go into the quicksand of hey we're gonna separate them all now it was really great to see him just not play around and show what he's capable of it's pretty great though because there is a couple of really solid jokes one of which comes from our boy dot talking about how how don't talk to me like you're the main character because he views himself as the main character and they're nothing but side characters. I thought that was a pretty glorious joke overall and I was like, damn boy, you really are fired up here. You're not letting these fools push you around and I'm here for the dot greatness. But I think the funniest moment was hands down the power of leverage because I wasn't sure how they were going to open that door because you use a spell to uncover the door, which, okay, yeah, we need another spell apparently to open it now. And we know physical brute force is his magic, right? It's his specialty of getting through. But the idea of casually carrying a suit of armor I'm like, okay, if he's gonna just brute force it, like, is he just gonna drop the suit of armor? But I don't really see why he needs to do that. Buddy 
hits the ground so it opens a bit and then he puts the sword on it and uses leverage to launch that thing. I mean, not only does this school need one hell of an insurance policy to cover the destruction that is Maj, but the fact that they at this point can't even be surprised. They're just like, hey, you know what? This is just our boy. That's how he's gonna be. And at hey, the door's open, so why should we complain? As Mash casually is like, where do I put the suit of armor now? He is such a nice boy at the end of the day that even after doing something like destroying the school's roof, he wants to put the suit of armor back because he doesn't want to leave things littered around. Like, I mean, this boy is absolutely insane. And honestly, prior to Lemon seemingly turning into a doll, I mean, the fact that she gives him, like, this little cream puff, which is designed after her with, like, the ribbon, punches him in the nose, and he's like, bro, what's going on here? There is some really humorous moments, but at the end of the day, this is setting a stage of a more serious endgame, at least as it stands, right? Because we got some serious fights going on, we have some character motivations, I mean, literally, people were getting killed during that prison break. There's a lot of interesting things at play, and I'm here for it. Though, hands down, the most anticipated fight for me has to be with MASH, not just because MASH is there and he's the best character, in my opinion, but the fact remains is that in the previous episode, the mass character looks at MASH and says he might be similar to me. Now, right now, I'm assuming, okay, if you're talking like that and you're calling out that MASH has no abilities as MASH stutters and is like, well, why would you say that? Like, why would you assume that? No, I got this the mark on my face. I'm fine. I'm interested if the mask comes off, is there no line underneath the eyes? Because we know the lines dictate magical power, and if it's double lines, you're extra powerful. Is this going to be a situation of physical meets physical, and the mask comes off and there's no line? Or if this does have magic, what makes you similar to MASH? Either way, there's a lot of possibilities there, and MASH ready to throw hands against someone who is fast enough to seemingly dodge? Yes, the mask did crack a bit during when it was, I think it was last week when basically MASH comes in to launch the attack and then the dodge happens and it's not till a couple of minutes later that we see the mask crack. Granted, yes, it wasn't a full-on attack, but we do know that MASH is capable of a lot of insane things, so either way, I'm here for it. A lot of funny jokes, I mean, Tom just casually being discarded by MASH because he's more interested in his cream pups, he, he, he just put a new batch in and you're telling me I need to go see someone at the hospital? I think if they're already there, they can wait an extra few minutes as I cook my cream puffs. I mean, MASH takes matters into his own hands. He cares a lot, but also at the same time feels like he cares about nothing other than cream puffs, but it's a great blend of comedy meets drama all mixed up into one. This seriously is like my favorite new comedy show like ever. I've been saying it, it's made me laugh the hardest I've ever laughed with anime, but most importantly, I love the world building, I love the characterization, and I love how rather than just making everything slapstick humor or a one-trick pony, they let the comedy rest at the appropriate moments to let us get to know characters or story arcs or plot threads, and then when the characters really go wild like the power of leverage or just mash casually saying I need to finish my cream puffs, it still makes us laugh just as hard but lets us breathe in between to really establish the end game of the season, and this is fantastic. But thoughts and feelings yourself down below, drop a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Be sure to also ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more MASH on the channel, and as I mentioned, we do have a full live reaction to this episode available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you'll also get a video shoutout. So today, we have Ariel, Buonaki, Monica Luzuria, Anthony Tong, Third Dynasty, and Celine Wu. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.